In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do an acid-base titration. So I'm trying to figure out the concentration of commercial hydrochloric acid that I bought from Home Depot. And it, it has a measure of concentration directly on the bottle, but it's always good to make sure. So what I have in the beaker is 50 milliliters of the hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to titrate that against 100 milliliters of 5 molar uh, sodium hydroxide solution. So the first thing to do is to add a couple of drops of phenolphthalein indicator solution to the acid. And this is a very powerful indicator, so you really only need a couple of drops of it. So this will turn pink once the concentration, or sorry, once the pH of this solution reaches uh, the equivalence point. So you'll know immediately when you've completely neutralized the acid. <clears throat> so to start, I'm going to add sodium hydroxide fairly quickly because I've estimated that I should need most, if not all, of the 100 milliliters that I prepared here. You still want to add it fairly slowly though because this reaction generates heat, which the camera might not be able to pick up, but you can you can see there's actually some steam coming off of this. So I'm going to be adding things fairly slowly. Now oh, there's a good plume of steam. And yeah, we'll hold off for a minute and let that cool down. So the reaction that's happening here is hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide is going to yield uh, sodium chloride, regular table salt, and water. So if I do this correctly and everything cancels out exactly, I should just end up with a uh, beaker full of salt water. Or rather, a beaker full of pink salt water, once the indicator changes colors. And this might take a while, so I'm going to speed this up, and uh, we'll skip to the end. So we're very close to the end now, and this is the point where it starts to get a little frustrating. Because once you think it's done, just a quick stir, and the color disappears again. And you have to keep on going. By the way, I should be using a burette to do this experiment so that I can more accurately measure how much I'm actually adding, but I don't have one. So I'm just going to take whatever solution is remaining and subtract it from whatever I started out with, and uh, I'll get a you know, pretty decent idea of how much I expended in the reaction. but not quite. I'm running out of solution here. Hopefully I made enough. That's really close. A couple more drops should do it.
and there it is. Titration complete. I may have added a few more extra drops because that's actually a pretty dark pinkish color. But you can see it's a really good indicator of when the equivalence point is reached because it's, it's such a dramatic change in color. So now that everything's complete, here I have a calculation to determine the molarity of my hydrochloric acid. So I have molarity of HCl is equal to the volume of the sodium hydroxide solution that I used divided by the volume of the hydrochloric acid that I started with times the molarity of sodium hydroxide times the coefficient of HCl divided by the coefficient of NaOH. And the coefficients I got from the balanced chemical equation here of hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide yields salt and water. And both of those only have coefficients of one. There's, there's nothing else there. So that ends up equating to uh, one over one. So you can ignore that. Uh, the volume of sodium hydroxide I used was 95 milliliters. The volume of HCl I started with was 50 milliliters. And the concentration of sodium hydroxide was 5 moles per liter. And that leaves me with 9.5 molar hydrochloric acid solution. And that's actually quite close to what they listed as. Uh, on the bottle, it's listed at 31.45% weight percentage, and that equates to 9.74 molar. So, fairly close, but not exactly equal. And that's why it's always good to test everything you have. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.